Hi everyone, I'm Mick Hawkins. I'm a team lead in the LMS platform team. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Um, so just a summary of um, our sprint. So we committed to 142 points um, and there were 26 brought in. Um, there were 53 completed and we've got 27 in integration and 48 up for peer review or being peer reviewed. Um, it's about a 32% velocity, which is uh, slightly less than last sprint. Um, we completed one task and squashed 15 bugs. All right, next slide, please. Um, so our sprint goals this time were to wrap up the issues that we carried over that were held so that we could focus on the 4.1 release. Uh, we've made some pretty good progress in that area. Um, I think there's still a couple hanging hanging over or in peer review, but the um, majority have progressed pretty well. Um, we also aim to land Guzzle so that it's available for some of the upcoming 4.2 projects. Um, that one, the development work is done and that's up for peer review. Um, we also wanted to work on some interesting kind of medium sized issues um, since we're not running Project Week at the moment, just so the team has an opportunity to decompress a bit and just focus on one task. Um, so I think that was pretty successful. Everyone had an opportunity to do some of that work. Um, and we also wanted to stay on top of peer reviews and spend some time on out of sprint peer reviews, so from the community and such. Um, and I sort of put a question mark on that one. Um, I think it went pretty well. There's 25 issues in the sprint that progressed past peer review um, and two thirds of the stuff that's currently up for peer reviews already in progress. So well, if it's not finished today, I guess we'll be um, hopefully wrapped up in the next little while. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Um, and in lieu of uh, Jun, um, our integration lead not being available. I've sort of pulled together just some basic numbers for this. Um, I hope they're correct. Uh, so 78 issues integrated and three rejected um, during the sprint. Um, there were about three integrators per week available. Um, and also just a couple of other updates. The um, 4.1 on sync period ended on the 12th of December. So all issues held during the 4.1 release have now been unheld. Um, and our next miners come out on the 16th of January. So that's, um, I guess, one week beyond the standard, uh, which is, I guess, pretty normal for us to do at the start of the year because of public holidays and things. Um, so I'll hand over to Simi now, I think, to go over some of the QA stuff. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Simi. I'm the software task engineer in the platform team. Um, Adrian, can you change the to the next slide, please? So yeah, just a um, quick update on the QA and testing side of things. Um, the In terms of development in the automated testing, we had a um, re recent regression in the calendar exporting um, that caused many um, CI failure failure builds, um, and also I have been working on the um, this MGL about adding some behind improvements, and one of those is to jump directly to the user editing page without having to like it. Basically, removes the necessity of adding three steps, and also I have been fixing some yeah CI failures and things like that. One good news um, in the QA and side and testing side of things is that Angelia, which has been working with us, she's an external test developer. She will be joining the team and also um, joining, like still working as external test developer, but she will be helping um, the conversion of QA tests to be had. Uh, she, she will be also be progressing her work uh, converting UI, uh, UI steps to data generators and hopefully she will also start helping with uh, peer reviews uh, related to testing issues. And yeah, that's the update from the QA 
and testing side of things. I think next is Matt, I think. Just, uh, yeah, thanks, Adrian. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd give a bit of an update on the uh, Matrix chat integration, which is uh, one of our big projects on our roadmap, um, and just sort of starting with some of the things we've completed so far. Uh, and also, too, just because I forgot Adrian's great intro, my name is Matt Porat. I'm the LMS uh, platform manager. Um, yeah, so just an update on what we've done so far. Uh, we've put together a, a set of uh, user stories that cover uh, student, teacher, and admin scenarios uh, for the first plat uh, for the first phase of this project's deliverables. Um, so we can use them to inform what we're what we're doing development wise. Uh, we've also met with. Um, uh, the matrix development team and an architect from them, um, which was sort of part of verifying our approach and some of our, our proposed workflows for the project. Uh, the feedback from that is that we're on track with what we're trying to do, which is great. Um, we also discussed things like access levels, uh, access level controls in matrix and how they can map to things uh, like user roles in Moodle. So for, for teachers and, and students and things, um, the matrix team also made us aware of some existing and upcoming functionality to be aware of. Uh, these won't impact the first phase of development too much, but uh, they're good uh, to be aware of for, uh, and will be useful for future releases. Um, we've done some initial matrix API testing and verification. So the, the main aim here was to check that the existing matrix API supports the functionality that we want to implement in this phase of development. So things like creating matrix uh, matrix rooms, creating users, adding and removing users from rooms, that kind of thing. Uh, this again was some good news uh, and everything that we want to be able to do uh, from Moodle via the Matrix API is possible, which is great. Um, We've uh, also done some investigation around uh, user authentication workflows and options for various configurations around things like single sign-on. Uh, these can be pretty tricky and something that we need to be aware of from a user exp uh, user experience perspective as we move forward. Uh, we also looked at uh, deep linking, uh, which is what happens, for example, when you click on a matrix room link in Moodle via the web interface or the, the Moodle mobile app, um, and just in including the different behaviors depending on whether you're on a mobile device or a web a web device for Moodle and if you've got a matrix client installed on that device or you're using a web client for example uh, and it looks like uh, from our initial investigations uh, all of those combinations be, uh, can be accommodated for but again this is something that we uh, want to keep in mind as we develop uh, moving on to things that are in progress uh, so we're now sort of working on taking those user stories that I mentioned before and converting them into trackers that the team can start uh, working on. Uh, and also, as Mick mentioned, we're working on implementing the, the Guzzle PHP library into Moodle core. Uh, and it's up, yeah, as he said, it's up for the peer review stage, which was great. Um, this will be used in other places in Moodle, but it's going to be really useful for um, talking to the Matrix API and as part of the, this project. And then finally, sort of the, the next steps, uh, we've got a UX collaboration session uh, internally this week uh, that'll help uh, nut out some of the details from a user experience perspective. And uh, finally, getting started with the bulk of the development tasks for the project. Um, and yeah, the, the best place to sort of stay across all of that uh, is the Epic, which is listed there. Uh, and just apart from next, just the next slide, Adrian. And yes, apart from that, is any questions for the team? Yes, 